and Unboxed. Today we're talking to Logan Steinfeld of Staples and we're going to dig into building packaging guidelines. Now Logan's built some amazing guidelines. They're about 300 pages deep. It goes into every aspect of the, of the pack from structure, graphics, uh, interaction points, and even materials. So it'll be really interesting to kind of go through and share what uh, somebody that's working on their packaging is going to receive when we talk about packaging guidelines. It's also important to understand why you and your brand need guidelines like this. Awesome. So thanks for joining us today. We've got Logan Steinfield from Staples and Coastwide. Logan, how's it going? It's good. It's good. Thanks for having me. How are you? Yeah, great, man. Awesome. Just uh, Arizona. It's like 110, 115 today. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That's rough. <laughs> yeah, it's really hot, man. Uh, where, where are you about? Where are you in the, in the country? Yeah, I'm in Boston. Uh, so, you know, if you hear any, uh, you know, traffic noises, my apologies, we're in the city. Um, but yeah, it's actually pretty cool today co compared to that. It's like 70. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's nice. And there's no, um, I don't hear a Boston accent, so. No, yeah. no, I'm from the West Coast. Yeah, from Oregon. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Cool, man. So, Today we want to talk about um, who Staples is, uh, what these brands are, um, and then kind of your role. But uh, before we kind of dig into that, you know, it'd be great to just understand, you know, your role in, in the organization and your history. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So um, my role at the company is I'm a I'm a manager of product design, um, and I uh, I've overseed a few brands within Staples. So basically managing the actual product design um, as well as the structural design of packaging. Um, my focus at Staples has really been in the technology category uh, with a brand called Next Technologies and then within the uh, facilities and pack and ship categories with a brand Coastwide. Um, my, my role has more recently shifted, so I'll be more focused on furniture uh, going forward. But yeah, that, that's been it. Um, you know, Staples, I should just mention in uh, 2018 started this transition from really uh, private label products to doing more to creating basically this house of brands that's that's just more thoughtfully designed okay. um, so you know we introduced last year um, five new brands so we have coastwide professional which is facilities we have next technologies which is technology we have union and scale which is furniture uh, perk which is break room products so cups plates that sort of thing um and then we have true red which is our business essentials uh office supplies um, okay so it's been a, it's been an exciting time to be there yeah, yeah that's a huge shift right because I, I remember walking into staples and you would see a million different products with a million different brands and there, there was never any there was the staples brand but it, it didn't have it was just generic you know, yeah yeah <laughs> <can't laughs> <laughs> <laughs> well, and it's, it's been a fun process, like really creating these brands with a lot of personality that, you know, really stand for something. And, and so um, that's what we've been trying to do. And, I, I, you know, I think we've been pretty successful at it. So, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, I mean, it seems it's like the target model. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, with, within the pandemic, you know, just in my neighborhood alone, I see the Staples truck going up and down the street as people are working from home and that people are now ordering supplies and it's just becoming... Stables just becoming a, a go-to brand. That's awesome. Happy to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> so um, within product design, product development, you know, I'm assuming that you're then an industrial designer. Yeah. So no. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah, kind of going through my my history. Um, yeah, I went to the University of Oregon, um, and actually, yeah, I got a degree in product design from there, um, which was really more focused, like industrial design. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I had some really good internships, um, you know, Ziba when I was a, a senior in college um, and I learned more about, you know, design strategy. It was a, it was a really great sort of eye-opening experience for me. Um, and then I, I actually went down and interned with Smart Design in San Francisco um, and just sort of built on, you know, that kind of big consultancy, um, you know, strategic industrial design uh, sort of stuff. And then moved on from there to startups and small businesses and uh, actually moved out to the Northeast um, and did some contracting work for a, a design consultancy called Essential Design. Mm -hmm. um, and they introduced me with, with, to Dan Riley and to the Staples team. And so I, I moved on to, to Staples from there. So yeah, I've had one of those experiences, I feel like, where I've worked at like, you know, small businesses, startups, <laughs> consultancies, and now this large organization. So it's, 
it's been a journey. Yeah. 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 That's awesome, man. And then, um, as you've kind of worked your way across the country, um, you've gone from product design and the reason I want to talk to you today is you've created a set of packaging guidelines that are mind blowing. And <laughs> yeah, I've told you this on several occasions, you know, these guidelines are, are so precise and developed in such a way that the system just makes sense. And it leaves zero questions for anybody. Uh, and really it reduces the ability for anybody to break the system that you've created. Um, obviously, there's always going to be opportunities for things to break, but it, it's really minimized that. Um, so from a packaging design standpoint, going from product development to creating uh, packaging guidelines and, and this system, you know, what's that transition like? You know, how, do you, how do you get selected to be the one to, to run point on this? Oh, gosh, yeah. That's, it just sort of evolved that way. Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like my time at startups um, and small businesses sort of helped with it um, because we were so lean. Um, the way we would have to create processes in order to be efficient, um, you know, we were building these systems. They weren't just design systems, but you know, process and development systems, mm -hmm. um, which I was just involved in. And so I think it's sort of the way I've I've kind of been trained to think. Um, but yeah, at Staples, you know, we were launching these brands and you know, hundreds and if not thousands of SKUs that needed to be packaged and needed to be launched. And so, you know, we just started looking at systems and how do we keep track of, of all this content we're creating, all the, all the creative work and how do we create consistency and structure and how do we, how do we build efficiencies on this? Um, you know, guides were something that even when I came in, we were talking about, um, but yeah, I think I just sort of, I think I just sort of took to them. I got excited. I mean, I was interested in them. <laughs> so I think, I think that helped. Um, but yeah, I think, I think kind of from there, it just, it just sort of worked out. Uh, it was natural. Yeah. 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 And I think it's, it's something, it's not something everybody can do. Um, you know, I think that's why it's important just to put this podcast out there is um, why, why brands need them and, you know, what it takes to actually build them. And to kind of go through, so I'll share my screen in, in a minute and kind of go through and, and show what this, uh, this set of guidelines actually contains. Because uh, a lot of times people don't understand what it really needs, right? There's brand guidelines and, you know, those are going to explain to you just, you know, position, color, uh, all these different variables of, of application for the brand. But when it comes to packaging, it's not just the way that graphics appear on a box. It's the entire journey of this pack from production, materials, um, you know, positioning of handles, uh, placement of color, all the way through, you know, how it's actually displayed within a, within a, a retail store uh, or how it works in e-com. And there's so many different areas within that, that as a packaging designer, you might not have all this information. So I'm assuming that as you were working on this, it wasn't like you in a closet just cranking away at this, like you had to have access to lots of people. Exactly. Yeah. And I think those are the, I think those are the challenges. Like this has been a long time in the works and, <laughs> and the way it's evolved is just, we keep learning from our mistakes or we keep finding new areas where we're like, Oh, we should bring that into this guide. Like that makes a lot of sense. We'll want to know that going forward. So yeah, it's, there's a lot to it. Yeah. Sure. So, um, how, I guess, how long did it actually take from to execute with the coast wide professional guidelines? Yeah. So, um, you know, with Coastwide, we actually started really with two different guides. So we started thinking about uh, structure. And so what kind of experience do we want to deliver um, to our customers? Um, you know, what kind of channel is this, is this being sold through? So as you know, like you mentioned, e-com, um, what's, what's common in that channel? Um, and really just kind of building that, like that structural guide. Um, but meanwhile, there was a graphics guide being developed. And so there was just sort of this disconnect and we were thinking, well, there's such an opportunity. We should be thinking about graphics while we're thinking about structure. Um, and so we, we combined it, you know, we combined the two, um, you know, I should say it was never my full-time job to be doing these guides. So it's kind of hard to quantify exactly like how many hours went into it. Um, but I guess I would say, you know, the most recent cut took, you know, probably, you know, half a year or, or, uh -huh. you know, three, three, probably three months, you know, uh -huh. um, just to get it all together. Yeah. into a way that makes sense. Sure. Um, so yeah. Why would a brand need packaging guidelines like this? 
Yeah, I think that's a really good question. Um, you know, our take on it is it's, it's really an efficiency driver uh, for the business. Um, you know, it, the way, it, like I see it sort of fitting into our development process. Um, you know, our goal is we go into this guide and we get alignment across teams and um, we get input across teams. And so as we build this, we can make big decisions across, you know, a huge volume of SKUs up front. And so further down, you know, the pipeline, we're not having, you know, alignment meetings on where does the logo go or why is the structure built this way? You know, I think our hope is that we can develop this guide with enough sort of forethought and vision to say, like, we don't need these meetings that we would traditionally have to have sure. to launch a product. And so, you know, I, I think a huge part of it is it's just a massive time saver. Um, you know, I think there's benefits to the customers as well. If you're a brand and you want to make sure that you're developing product that, that fits on brand, um, you can always look back to this guide and just make sure that, that you're doing that and you're delivering the same experience for your customer every time. And I, you know, we think that's really important, especially as we're building new brands. Um, but yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of good reasons for it. Yeah. Sure. And, and part of the reason that this, this particular guide is so robust. Um, and I think it's what almost, almost 300 pages, right? <laughs> Somewhere around there. <laughs> it's pretty big. Um, yeah. Is because you guys, as Staples, uh, and with this one in particular, Coastwide, the number of SKUs is, uh, you know, it's just a high SKU count. What, yeah. How many SKUs do you, would you estimate you have at this point? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's, hard, it's honestly hard to estimate. Uh, yeah, hundreds, um, maybe, thousands, maybe thousands, but, um, you know, yeah, like Co Coastwide's an interesting brand. So Coastwide does facilities products. Mm -hmm. So what that means is we do chemicals, uh, cleaning tools, um, you know, there's a, a janitorial cart. Um, but you know, things like that. Um, we also do pack and ship products. So tape, corrugate, you know, boxes and that sort of thing. And then, um, you know, we've actually, Coastwide's a great brand because, you know, we, we say it's, it plays both in front of house, uh, and back of house. And so back of house would be everything for, you know, the professional, um, personnel using these box, using, sorry, these products to like, you know, clean a facility or, or for shipping. The front of house products are really products that everybody might interact with. And so I think the best example of that is we, we recently launched a dispenser line uh, for, you know, uh, paper towel, soap, bath tissue. And that, that all lives in a, in a front of house environment where anybody could interact with it. And so our design language, you know, has to change between, you know, we call them themes, this front of house theme and this back of house theme. But as you can imagine, you know, it's just a space where it's, an, it's inherent to have a ton of SKUs because there's with cleaning in general, there's so many different types of cleaning and you just need the right product with the right spec for the right job. And so it just explodes, you know, the SKUs, so. So, and, yeah. so for example, the front of house products, and this is the case for, for, for both front and back of house, um, let's say with the paper towel dispensers, this isn't a case where Coastwide's buying a stock, um, you know, towel dispenser and, and labeling it. I mean, your team is actually designing the aesthetic and the functionality and making it so that it can fit within a variety of different bathroom uh, environments, right? Like uh, how involved yeah. are you, you know, how involved is your team in, in, in all those details? Yeah. So no, I mean, it's, it's one of the, <laughs> it, we, we are involved. Like, so we're, you know, our, it's our job to deliver that design work and um, yeah, the dispenser line was, was a whole ground up new um, design project where we were creating a new design language and we wanted this really great sort of family look that was contemporary and fits in with again. Yeah. Like modern, you know, restrooms. It doesn't, it, it looks good. Um, we also wanted to fit in with the brand, you know, personality. And um, so we, I think we did a great job sort of merging the two. Um, but yeah, we work, you know, we work with great third parties as well. So, you know, when we need resources, um, sure. you know, we can, we, we can bring those in. Cool. Um, so that's the product development. And then you've got to pack those out and ship those to individual stores from a mom and pop to a large enterprise. Yeah. Okay. So then that's where the, the guidelines come in. That's, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And so I should actually frame it up. So like we, you know, we actually use three different guides. So we have a brand guide, which is all about the brand, um, you know, personality, positioning, essence, pillars. Uh, we have a product guide, which describes, you know, the physical product, um, you know, what does on product, you know, identity look like logos, graphics, colors, um, the shape of the product, the profile, the silhouette, um, you know, and then we have our packaging guide and, 
you know, the hope is that when you, when you get to this packaging guide, you've got a good product in hand. And when you exit this product or the packaging guide, it's, it's packaged and it's like ready to ship to a customer. Um, yeah. That's excellent, man. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we awesome. can kinda, we can kind of dig into this guy, you know, been hyping it up for a little bit here. So now it's time to actually see what we're talking about. Um, just confirm you can see my screen. Yep. Looks good. Uh, it does look good. <laughs> <laughs> you guys created it. No. Um, <laughs> cool, man. So, uh, yeah, so this is the, the guidelines for, for Coast Wide, right? This is the, the kickoff from March 2020. Uh, and we're recording this in, uh, what is it? It's July. It's like, it's hard to even keep track anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. You know, you didn't go online and you didn't download a set of, you know, templated guidelines like you built this from the ground up yeah no i think i think i think that's kind of it like we i've seen a lot of guides and i think honestly even in college i was looking at you know just like how do you how do you do a logo and how do you do color and and white spacing and and how do you create rules like i mean i think guides have been around for a really long time i just hadn't seen we never really seen like a blueprint for a packaging guide and we really felt like we needed one so i think that's where you know Part of this was really exploratory and how do we create something that's going to be really useful for us and um you know we do have these for the other brands as well and i think everyone's different because we're really thinking about you know how is this guide working for the brand um so i just don't think a specific template i mean although i think that's probably a great starting point um you know i just don't i think every brand's so unique that these guides can be more personal to the brand um yeah sure. and i guess I should say too, you know, this is a, a, a very abbreviated um, version of the guide. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we left out like a lot of the confidential, you know, anything we felt was personal or, or confidential so we could strip out, out that stuff and hopefully just give a bit of a skeleton to show kind of how we formatted this and how we think about it. Yeah. So, so knowing the brand, you know, knowing the customer and then, you know, understanding the ch sales channels, you know, this is like right at the very upfront, you know, shows you front of the house, back of house. Uh, you know, all the packaging and exactly. you know, so in this image, right, we've got a soap dispenser uh, and I'm assuming the, the buckets and everything else are, are products that I would go to Coast White for. Yeah. Yeah. And I think exactly. And then just setting the environment. So like, you yeah. know, we play in these three spaces. So just sort of, just sort of giving some context. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I think from as a consumer and I keep looking this way because I've got the double screens going um, is I see those caution wet floor things, you know, when you're, when we were able to go out before in the olden days, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but you don't consider like somebody's got to pack those out, right? These have to ship and I'm sure they're shipping like a set of three or a set of four or whatever that is. And they've got to be protected. And it's, you know, um, you know, whether it's a, like an ABS plastic or some kind of poly combination, if those things drop, they're going to snap or break. So there's a lot of protection that, that's in, in, involved in there. Totally. You know, yeah, you just forget that sometimes that everything that you're seeing actually gets packaged. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not just the pretty things that are on shelf and your guidelines covers everything. Yeah. Well, and I think that's hard too. Cause like, I think we'll talk about it, but you know, when you look at different products, even within a category, like there's a lot of just different category norms. Like, is it shipped in a poly bag? Is it shipped in a corrugate box? Is it, you know, whatever, just bubble wrapped and, you know, I don't know, is there just a label on it? Like there's so much variety in, in even in just these consistent categories that that's also just that variety makes it really challenging. Sure. And yeah, it's, it's not a, uh, it's, there's no cookie cutter approach to this at all. And, you know, just give me, you know, if you can just kind of walk me through what we're looking at, uh, obviously totally. it's, it's the overview, but you know, this is the starting point, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we really start our guides with, um, you know, kind of this high level strategic thinking and a lot of this, we want to ladder back and support the brand guide. And so, you know, as we go into our packaging guide, we look at what the brand personality attributes are and, you know, we, we try to build those out and use those really as our design principles. Um, but we have to look at them through this lens of the brand positioning, uh, you know, who's our end customer? How much do we know about them? You know, who's our end customer? Who's the end user? Who's our aspirational customer? 
just really understanding, you know, that, that individual, that person. And then, like you said, under, you know, the channel as well. So, um, if this was, so I should say coast, coastwide is really B2B, but you know, if this was retail and brick and mortar, um, you know, this would, again, we have a really different approach to our, our, um, you know, design thinking, but, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, I, I feel like, you know, this strategic stuff is, you know, really how we start. And, and this section is pretty long. We give a lot of examples around each design principle and, um, you know, how, how it translates to, to packaging and put those guardrails in up front. Sure. And, you know, I think a lot of times when we, when we think of guidelines and, you know, we're talking about understanding the customer and the positioning, you know, you always think of, you know, like a, like a Pepsi or, uh, you know, Louis Vuitton or, you know, you don't consider, oh, this is a janitorial, you know, this is uh, facilities, <laughs> right? Like, you know, honestly, but you have yeah. a customer, you have somebody that needs the product, you have to approach all of your design with this type of a system. You know, you, you have to understand everybody. Uh, so how do they, to just yeah. understand, so just understanding your, your consumer, how do they purchase the products? Is it through catalog? Is it through web? Like what's that engagement? Where's that begin? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely a few ways. I mean, you know, even just staples.com, but um, you know, there's contract, there's um, yeah, there's catalogs. So, so they can find it in a, in a variety of, of different places. Um, but yeah, you know, and I should say like, it, you know, this isn't luxury packaging. And so understanding that customer and their expectations, you know, some things might actually be really inappropriate, you know, for that mm-hmm. customer. And so we want to understand like, you know, what are they used to? And then how can we exceed their expectations? Or what do they really value? You know, I think what we found with, with Coastwide is these are utilitarian products. So, you know, how can we add utility? How, how can we add value from a, from a functional standpoint? Um, you know, yeah, yeah, I think we really look at that sort of stuff. No, and, that, and that's, that's really important, right? As I, you know, if I go, you know, if I'm purchasing facilities products for, for my home office or for, you know, an enterprise office, um, I'm going to go online or through catalog. I'm going to have this wonderful experience. And when I receive the product, I expect that that experience continues, you know, and, and it's not just for product protection, but that there's actually... Uh, a design sensibility within that packaging because that value, like you said, is why I'm paying a premium. You know, that's, that's what I'm expecting as a customer. Right. So when we get into, we're going to go into uh, the elements uh, of structural. So yeah. tell me about, tell me about the products that we're looking at and how the system works. Yeah. So, yeah, so we start, yeah, so we go right into structural. This is where we pretty much lay out all of our structural thinking. Um, and, and we have a bunch of stuff in here. But um, yeah, just sort of wanted to pull out a few of these. Um, so this would basically be, you know, I think specifically we use this a lot for our, our chemicals. But um, this would be a master um, a carton that, you know, a chemical bottle or a couple might may sit in. Or, you know, we actually blow this out. And we, we hope this works across really all the product categories. But um, yeah, so we thought, okay, well, if it's, if it's a corrugate box, um, you know, what, what can we do to just create consistencies here? And, and how can we zone these boxes um, so that even as we launch new products, you know, we, we again still have that consistency. And so, um, yeah, we created this, this graphic here to help um, articulate our thinking. So uh, the first, um, you know, illustration you see is product ID. And so we have these labels that wrap two sides of the box and that has all of our product info, you know, product title, um, uh, you know, description, um, et cetera. And uh, our thought is, you know, we've seen these boxes. We don't know what the orientation is going to be when they're sitting on a shelf. So we want to give redundant information again, kind of adding utility to this thing. Um, so it's not just on one side. So we've really zoned out. Um, you know, two panels uh, to, to display this information. Uh, the safe handling. So we wanted to create a zone where, you know, orientation, um, you know, no cut symbols, other sort of icons that encourage safety can go and just reside. And we will just make sure we're never interfering in that, in that zone. <laughs> um, the interactions. And I think there's, there's some following slides that, that we go into more detail on the interactions, but you know, how do people open this box? How do they carry the box? Um, if the box dispenses product, um, you know, what's that perforation zone like? How does it dispense? Um, so we've created you know, rules around that. 
Um, and then just additional guidance. So in certain situations, this box might actually be, um, you know, if it's dispensing, it might actually be, you know, almost considered like the product. product yeah. So we'd want some sort of, you know, instructions for use or some sort of guidance uh, in that area. Um, so our hope by creating these zones, it's, it's like, it's not too rigid. It sort of gives people some flexibility, but um, it does give us some order to, to the box mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. Excellent. And then this is, so really, you know, and we're looking at pages 26 and 27, right? So we are jumping around and digging deeper. So as we're looking at this, like you mentioned, these are the master cartons. So this is what your multiple products are shipping in. Um, so yeah. this, this would arrive to my location as is. Um, so the reason that you're needing those labels, like you mentioned, isn't just because it arrives at my, at my location and I need to understand what, what it is. I'm assuming that also goes to warehousing and storage and inventory and all these other uh, components within just supply chain. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Like in some situations, this, this probably, you know, could get packed into a, an even bigger box, you know, mm -hmm. if somebody's purchasing multiple product and, um, you know, it's in a fulfillment center somewhere or a distribution center somewhere, you know. Your carton zoning, you know, when you dig into pages further within this section, will then explain sizing, proportions, uh, colors, and all these other things. And you're going to see this orange color throughout. Yeah, it's, well, it's our brand color, but we really use it for like, you know, we call it an activation touch point color. It's, it's really meant to inform where you should honestly, like which, where you should interact with the product and what you should touch. And so, um, you know, if it's, if it's guidance for use, it could be knobs, it could be buttons um, on product. If it's on packaging, it could be where you open the package, um, where you're supposed to puncture something and, and sure. you know, rip the perforation from, but yeah. Yeah. And when we get into, you know, further in our pages 30, 38 and 39, uh, you know, these interaction zones, right? You've got everything from perforations, the, the corner radiuses on some of these, um, you know, you're really digging into the specifics. Yeah. Uh, keep, so, so how do you, you know, how do you just determine what the appropriate corner radius is? You know, is that from a, from a brand standpoint, is that something that, that begins from, from there and then extends into packaging? Yeah, well, I think, you know, with the radius, we were really thinking about like, you know, if something's dispensing or if, you know, we talked about this, these chads, you know, these handles, mm -hmm. and if, you know, somebody's wearing gloves, like is it big enough or, or what's going through the perforation? And, you know, we wanted to make it so it's, A, it's like easy to tear and it's easy to tear it around a radius so it doesn't get caught in a, in a corner. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, if we're, if we're doing these jagged perforations, we don't want things to have a hard time dispensing or, you know, a glove getting, getting caught on something. So I think, um, you know, I think that's sort of where, where that came from. Um, sure. But, you know, we've talked about this, I think, in the past where it's like, this is yeah. potentially <laughs> like a black hole, like you can get lost on, on this one. Um, yeah. So I think it's good sort of the level of resolution that this one's at just yes. because... Um, Perforation is, yeah, it could be a challenge for yeah. sure. No, and, and you're right. So just to, to give context, we have talked about, uh, you know, Logan and I have talked about this, these guys several times. Um, but when you talk about black holes, as you're building this out, uh, not specific to, to the perforations themselves, but as you're building out these guidelines, I'm sure there are areas where you have to, you have to just say, okay, well, this is as far as we're going because we can keep going forever. Um, you know, is yeah. yeah. Tell, tell me about how you stop yourself and when you're when you're building something like this. We want to give the right amount of information where it's useful, but we don't want to get stuck. We don't want to over design something too early okay. and then feel like we have to follow those rules. Um, you know, I think like in this section of structure, we actually do on other slides that aren't aren't here today. We t we talk about what substrates we want to use, what kind of printing quality we're shooting for. Um, you know, and we do we do provide like actual specs that are mm -hmm. that are super clear like you know um but i think you know this is one of those areas where i started looking at it and it was you know you can you can specify like the cut length versus the remaining you know corrugate yes. bridge and then you know all of our like our stuff passes ista testing and so if it if it you know goes through a drop test and the contents burst through this perforated area like it'll it'll fail that testing and so um, you know, so if we make that those cut marks too small, then, then the user can't rip off the perforation and it's right. pretty much useless. So it's like, 
you know, we looked at these spreadsheets of like, okay, well, you know, I was thinking like, if, if it's this much weight and it's, it's this kind of perfor, you know, this sort of substrate, like what's the perforation? And it just was like, you know what, we'll cross those bridges, you know, right. as we, as we kind of get there. And yeah, it's just hard to, to have that much forethought, I think, you know, in, in some of this stuff, but um, yeah, but I think you'll that's, notice. That's the stuff that, you know, that's the stuff that we geek out on, right? It's like, yeah. Yeah. Like you want to know exactly what those things should be, but there are so many variables that you can spend your time, you know, in a much better, in a much better area that's going to move you actually forward. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so you've got, you know, so it's the same thing, right? It's box closures is another black hole that you could potentially get into. So you're keeping yep. it high level. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think with this, we wanted to say, like, you know, here's our hierarchy, here's kind of our ideals, um, you know, ideal situation. And then, you know, depending on the vendor, you know, and, and the project, um, you know, other acceptable alternatives. So, you know, if we can use glue, great. If, if we can't, and we're using a craft colored box, can we do this matching, you know, water activated tape? Um, we know that's really strong, and it's, it's good at volume. And, you know, if we're doing a white box, you know, clear tape. So, so we're not having this color clash, um, yeah. you know, so it seems really simple, but again, it's just sort of a reminder, I think for us, you know? Yeah. And as you're, you know, really what this, what this is, is it does simplify decision-making when you're talking to manufacturers that are putting together the products and then fulfilling this out. If you don't specify what happens is, um, you know, they're going to do like an H tape closure or they're going to, um, you know, use whatever tape they have on hand and then they start breaking the system and it's out of your control. So by providing something like this, you're taking control of everything and you're giving them the flexibility to make decisions. You know, these are the three the ways to pack it out and then everybody gives, you know, everybody can, can participate in, in that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's like you want to create a really tight system, but give everybody the flexibility to be able to, to, to make it work for, for their systems. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, you know, we, we have this, I'm, I'm sure everybody does, but you, you come into these situations where you aren't going to get your ideal situation. Like, you just, it just doesn't make sense, um, you know, from, you know, a costing standpoint, from a manufacturing standpoint, you know, the way these things are built. Um, and so it is like having that flexibility, I think for us, is just knowing it's still on brand. Um, is like that's just really helpful just to have some alternatives to it um sure so totally yeah and we've got so we've got the label system on the structure you're showing where where pieces are applied um how you direct the user to know where to apply the labels this is page 65 so we're you know almost 70 pages deep and we're still just touching on like the, the out of box um you know, yeah. just to, to give you a sense of how, of how big this is. And I kind of want to just kind of jump through to like the, all right, so the next section, right? So that was, you know, a, a big chunk of the first part of just structure and interacting yeah. with it. Yeah. So when we get into design elements and the graphics, it's, you know, front of house and what things actually look like. So can we kind of just give us a high level on, on this area. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So this area, we, um, we talk about, okay, here's all these different um, structures. So we have our front of house and then uh, we have our back of house structures. Um, and basically the idea with this chapter is it's really, it's like where the rubber meets the road. This is where we figure out how our graphic systems are going to fit and flex on all of these structures. And we have such a variety of shapes. So we, we have to figure out a graphic system that is flexible enough that it's going to work. Um, but also rigid enough where we continue to deliver again, that same, that same experience. Um, so I think the graphic stuff is, is really challenging, um, sure. but it's super important. So yeah, so that's basically just an overview of, you know, the, the, the structures and the graphics we're going to talk about for front of house. This is the same thing for back of house. So it's from a printed carton to a two sided label, sure. a printed carton yeah. with a label. Yeah. yeah. And I love this, you know, the activation color, right. Where we're showing where, you know, where you punch it out, how you hold it. Right. You know, it, it's not, it's really thought, thought through. And again, this is back of house. So you're really thinking of the person that's, you know, tearing into that trash bag, you know, that box of trash bags, how they're going to do it so that they tear it appropriately so that they don't have this, you know, wonky rip 
that then dispenses too many products at once. Like there's a whole, you know, there's a, <laughs> there's a reason for, for everything. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, I think the, the preparation thing is funny too, because it's like, how, how do people take it out? Like, and how is it oriented? You know, if they want to slot it in like a book, can they still, you know, access stuff? You know, if it's sitting yeah. flat like that, can they still use it? And yeah, it's like every orientation. How do we, how do we solve this problem? Um, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, then, then the, yeah, same here, yeah, right? Same here. Yeah. So I think this one we haven't really talked about, but it's, you know, we consider everything that goes on these products packaging as well. So mm -hmm. This is where like we don't touch on it too much in structure, um, you know, but but we have to solve for on product labels uh, as well. And um, yeah, just more more to it. Yeah. And so with that on product labeling, uh, we're talking about where where these labels go on the pack. It's not just a matter of I've got a cylinder and I need graphics, right? It, it's thinking through the its entire process, uh, the use case, and what else it's interacting with. So, you know, talking about this slide, and this is always one slide that, that, that I'm, I'm really, you know, I always geek out on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think, I mean, I think you touched on it. Like, yeah, you know, we, we think a lot about orientation. Um, you know, we think a lot about color. So, you know, one thing we've done with our chemicals is We've, we've separated our chemicals by types. So, you know, disinfectants, multipurpose, glass cleaners, degreasers, floor. Um, and, you know, we've created these colors for each chemical type. Um, and, you know, we wanted that to be super pronounced and, and loud on the labels themselves. So you see, you know, different chemicals are gonna have a different background color. Um, but, you know, also what's the orientation? So. You know, we want, again, some sort of a rep repeated information on both like this landscape side as well as the, the portrait side. But, you know, in some situations, you know, so this is an example of chemicals that fit with a, a wall um, a dispenser where it actually dilutes the chemical. It hooks up to a water supply and um, it, it mixes chemicals to the pro proper ratio of water. Um, and so, you know, we've got to be able to show that chemical label through these little window cutouts um, in the dispenser itself. And so we obviously have to think about, um, you know, how, how that packaging um, delivers when it's, when it's in use in a dispenser like this. So, sure. yeah. So, you know, in, in this case, you've got, you've got graphics and the structure and they're, everything is working together. Um, so regardless of, of who I am and I'm approaching this product, I can, I can see the information on the packaging. Um, it's really intuitive, but you know, I'm looking at the, the window area and that radius on that. Does that tie back to previous radiuses? And does that radius also then apply to the, the product itself? Does that become a, a consistent component? You know, I, in general, we do strive for that. Like we, we, we do try and have these consistent design elements for sure across our, our product. And, um, you know, when we can, we try and bring those into packaging as well. I mean, we love that harmony, you know, yeah. if we can do it. So, um, yeah, I think, I think dispensers is probably, a, you know, like actually the front of house dispensers is probably a good example of like a really consistent language. But, um, but yeah, I think, I think this one works, you know, yeah. uh, as well. So, yeah. so to that point, when you're working in packaging and you're developing, you know, developing packaging for a product that's being, you know, that's in process or maybe a product that's already completed, you know, being able to work with the product development team is so critical because they've created a language within the, the system itself that can then, you know, be rolled out into the packaging. And if you're not having that conversation with the two teams, you can just have packaging that, you know, misses a lot of great opportunities or yeah. kind of breaks that, begins to break that system. Yeah, and I think that's actually, that's one of the things I love about my role is that because I can work on structural and graphics and, um, and the physical design of the product, you know, like we go into packaging really with like an intimate knowledge of the product. Right. And so, um, you know, I think instead of just receiving a product and trying to figure out how to pack it, we might want to highlight some assembly details or an orientation that we think is really important. Um, so I think that is it's sort of nice to have that knowledge going into packaging. Yeah. So let me get into brand and, you know, we'll, We'll kind of just kind of skip through this one a little bit. Yeah, um, you know, this is your, pretty common. Yeah, yeah. So this is kind of yeah. This is like where you start seeing you know color, um, 
the logo, all the all the main information that you typically see in, in brand guidelines. So I'm assuming that that's yeah. going to be an abbreviated version. Exactly. And yeah. It, we're not keeping count, but you know, this is 100 page 130 of this book. <laughs> <laughs> I should say we use we use big fonts and small, you know, a lot of images. So <laughs> not trying to make it too long, but no. yeah. But what's great about it is that you've got it. You've got this. That you've got this book broken out into chapters. So if I'm working on a new pack for a paper towel dispenser, I can go to different sections, understand structure, get you know get that as my baseline, move into graphics, um, and, and it just it's an easy to use format. Yeah. Our hope then, is people flip through it, they, like just like that. Yeah. Right. You just you just jump to whatever section. You're not expecting anybody to read cover to cover. No. Uh, though it is riveting, you know. I've got to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> um, but with, with anything else that we're we're wrapping labels on, we're talking facilities, products, you know, chemicals. There's going to be uh, a lot of mandatory and regulatory information that goes on here. And you know, this is the part from a design standpoint that you're never really excited about because you never know how many different translations you're going you're gonna to have to run into. Yeah. But you guys make it really simple. So tell me a little bit about the way you guys have broken this out. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I mean, you said it like this is information that has to go on onto the product. Um, Coastwide is great because Coastwide is a brand that's translated uh, both English and Spanish. Um, but, you know, really with this one, and it's different by product, what information has to go um, on these labels, but we just wanted to create a, a consistent hierarchy. So just something that followed the same order um, every time. And so, you know, instructions for use being at the top, industry certifications. So, um, you know, we, we have some uh, great certifications and then warnings all the way down to your UPC. Um, so it's, you know, if somebody is reading this stuff and they buy a bunch of coastwide products, um, you know, they can hopefully kind of orient themselves when they get a new product. They'll know, you know, where to look for the emergency or warning information. And uh, yeah, they don't have to get lost, but just more consistency. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what's interesting about that is that um, from a user standpoint, you don't, you don't really recognize the order, right? You know, like if you're looking at a shampoo bottle, you know, or uh a cleaner you don't recognize that there's an order there yeah but you but you do like subconsciously you know where to look for certain things uh, right yeah. yeah i think of like i think of like tylenol right like if you're looking like okay how how you know how many am i supposed to take you know right. how do you, you just find like skim down the, the label <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah and hopefully it's where you think it is um yeah. oftentimes it's not but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I always think I always use my mom as an example, right? My poor mom. It's like if she looks at these, will she know where to where to find the information, right? And if you build out this consistency, then yeah, of course. You know, she might yeah. not know. She might she won't be able to explain it to me. Go, oh yeah, look in the bottom left corner. That's where the certification is. But right. if she's looking at it, you just got you know skim down and you know where things are. Right. Uh, then with anything else, right? Like whether it's facilities, tech, you know cosmetics there's always going to be instructions um, and you guys have taken it from out of pack how it moves to on pack and now these are additional pieces so right. tell me about like the illustrations and everything else that you guys have worked on here yeah so i mean yeah this is really the, the kind of the like you know final details um yeah we have guides around if it's just a one-page leaflet if it's a multi-page booklet um if we can use color uh you know, how are we using color and is there a, a rhyme or a reason to it? Um, so yeah, we, you know, we put all that information in here as well. So we're not guessing what color an arrow should be or, or, um, a key line or, or even the perspective of the product, you know, um, and the, the type of resolution we want for these, uh, illustrations. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're trying to just be really clear again. So as we go through and we make manual after manual, we're, we're, we're staying on track. Um, but yeah, we thought about exactly like how the, what the color usage is, um, the line weights, um, the angles, and, you know, and all so, of that. So you've, um, with the perspective of the product, are you saying that you've got a consistent perspective on all illustrations? You know, on, on, on a lot of them, that's what we strive for. Yeah. So, you know, we look at like, okay, we like this isometric, you know, um, illustration, you know, probably pulled from CAD. So it's, mm -hmm. it's got a lot of the details like the ribs and, um, 
you know, the assembly parts. And uh, yeah, and we, you know, we try and strive for that exact isometric shot, you know, every time, um, you know, if we, if we can. Um, right. You know, there's certain situations where it doesn't make sense. Like, you know, you look at flat <laughs> warning icons, like don't, you know, like a, a caution for, for slipping sure. on a wet floor and, you know, having something really flat and bold is, you know, it's a little bit different. So we look at like on product graphics versus, excuse me, instruction manual graphics and, you know, where's the right place to add that detail um, where it's informative and helpful. And then where is it better to just simplify it and go with like more of a gesture. So it reads at distance. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then we're talking, you know, design demo and what, you know, all that information from out of pack to on pack and, you know, all the different cues. You know, yeah. It gives you like a good, a, a good view of what that looks like. Yeah, I think, you know, this is always the fun section for us. This is where, you know, we, we um, try and take all the rules we just put together in the guide and then we, we express it how we see, you know, it, 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 it happening basically. Mm -hmm. And so this is like, if somebody followed this guide perfectly, we can start showing what the output would be. And so we love showing this stuff because it's, it's usually pretty high gloss, high quality rendering and, <laughs> Um, you know, some of the stuff might not get, get made, um, but it still just really illustrates the point if we were to ever do, do something like this. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so this is just the, the culmination of all the information sure. basically. Yeah. And, I, and I think for anybody, you know, for anybody that's watching this, when you see this family of, of packaging and you see the design applied to it, right? We've got the, the clear label or the clear tape on one of the boxes, the adhesive uh, activated tape. Uh, the, the water activated tape, the glued lid, you can see the position of the label uh, on all of them. And you see this, these, these activation zones, you know, it, it comes together like a really well thought out system that when you're receiving the product, you see them, but you don't see all the work that goes into it. And, you know, I mean, just, you know, kudos to, to your team for developing something that works. So, you know, so seamless. Uh, that, that it's amazing. Well, th thank you so much. Yeah, I, no, it's it's fun showing this stuff and talking to it. So yeah, yeah. no, appreciate yeah. it. And you you know you've, you've talked in the past about um, you know formatting this for the reader and, and making it work for uh, yeah apply blank. Can you kind of tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I think you know I think it's one thing to just sort of have a bunch of slides. It's like you know, and I think our you know some of the stuff I've done in the past has really just been kind of out of order slides, but I'm keeping track of this information somewhere. Um, we wanted to share this though, you know, cross-functionally with, with other teammates, you know, PD, uh, product development, product management, um, you know, potentially with, you know, a, a, a vendor partner or certain slides. Um, probably wouldn't share this whole thing, but, um, you know, and, and the idea is basically if you're not a designer, you know, definitely designers are going to be using this, but if you're not a designer, can you still can you still use this guide and still put something out that is on brand? And I think we wanted to structure this. So the document itself is, is designed in that you can read it. There's chapters to it. There's a flow to it. You can find what you're looking for. Um, yeah. So we actually just spent time designing the document itself to be readable. And it's probably why it's so long is just because we didn't want to cram too much stuff into <laughs> one page and, and yeah, it's more of a book, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, and that's how you have to approach it. You've got chapters, you've got sections within those chapters. Um, it definitely makes sense. And when you were putting this together, you know, obviously you don't just, you don't just start writing a book, right? You've got, you've got to start building things out. Did you, did you work through it systematically from a structural standpoint, looking at all the way across or like you said, just kind of did bits and pieces throughout? Yeah, we, yeah, we kind of did it. We kind of did it chapter by chapter, but we didn't do the chapters in order. If, if that makes sense. Sure. Like we did the structural at one point, we did the graphics at one point, we did um, design principles and strategy at, at one point, um, you know, and, and it wasn't really until we started pulling it together and figuring out um, the right flow for it, that it, mm -hmm. that it kind of all came together. I mean, once we did that, we realized, you know, Hey, we're missing, you know, 10 or 15 pages that would really sure. fill the story. Um, yeah, but uh, we did it. We tried to do it in chunks. So, yeah. you know, where we could. Yeah. Cool. So going through this document, you know, my dog's barking. Sorry about that. Oh. Um, so going through the document, it's like I see from it as a designer, you, you see the value, um, you see how it works. But 
as a corporate entity, why does why does the Staples need a document like this? Yeah, I think this document helps with efficiencies. Um, when we go into a new project, the idea is we aren't going to have to review every single artwork label with you know every stakeholder every single time um, when we're when we're trying to deliver uh, a large volume of SKUs. Rather, if we know what we want going into this, we know the graphic system set up, we're aligned there. And then when we, when we are reviewing with a team, we can review a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. Um, so our hope is, you know, at least my hope is it's, you know, there's this return on investment of the effort we put into this guide, we get out from the amount of, you know, fewer hours we're spending launching uh, new packaging, if, if that makes sense. Um, you know, I also just think it's a great reference doc for us. Um, it's, it's great for us to explore. And as we build out guides like this, we start to see, you know, hey, are there, is there other areas we can play? You know, maybe, you know, spur some sort of creativity. Um, but yeah, I think, I think we get, you know, uh, a good amount of value out of this. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And I think it's, you know, it's one thing I always talk to um, designers and, and clients about is, you know, we don't do this for charity, right? Um, it's a business it's got to deliver, it's got to be profitable. And a guidelines like this, like you said, when you're talking about efficiencies, it's less wasted time. Uh, right. You know, it's allowing for, uh, you know, it's allowing the, the corporation to save money, uh, but it's also then streamlining things for your vendors, right? They know they've got to pack out things in this particular format. Uh, and a lot of times people don't realize, you know, if they're at a startup, is if you don't dictate a lot of this information up front, your vendor might not have that specific box, but they've got a whole palette of a box that's maybe a little different. And they, they can pack things out that way because it's easy for them, but they don't realize how that impacts the rest of your business. You know, you might not be able to fit as many on a palette. You might not be able to fit them in whatever your storage container is that you're, that you're using at that time. Uh, so taking control of the whole system, really at the end of the day, is about, you know, saving money and using your resources you know extremely wisely which which is uh which is you know again something that's, that's really important so yeah. if somebody wants to put together a document like this <laughs> <laughs> where do you recommend they get started yeah i think i think that's a that's that's a really good question i think um you know, I go back to a lot of brand stuff. Like, I think just the best way to get started on this is to do your research and to gather as much information up front as possible. Um, you know, it depends on, on what you have, you know, I would say from a brand standpoint already, you know, if you, if you have a brand guide, if you know your brand personality, your attributes, you know, that, that could save you a lot of time. Um, but if you don't, I think you'll probably have to go in and start to figure some of that stuff out really early on. Um, so, you know, definitely know your brand, know what you're, what, know what you're designing for, um, you know, know your customer um, and, and, you know, do as much research you can up front uh, around your customer, what they expect, you know, think about, you know, maybe aspirational customers or other customers you'd, you'd, you'd want to have um, and what they expect. Uh, definitely know your sales channels. So if this is, you know, Rick, uh, retail, like brick and mortar, you know, store, um, it's just going to be really different to compete on a shelf where there's so much happening and so much competition and how do you create contrast and how do you stand out amongst something, you know, with amongst all these competitors um, versus how do you create efficiencies on, you know, an e-commerce business um, or, or B2B or, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I would say, um, you know, lastly, probably from a just information gathering, try and see what you know about your vendors and your partners and what their capabilities are. You know, if you can design, you know, based on what a factory is capable of producing, like, like that's going to save you just, you know, so much time up front. Doesn't mean you should box in your design or your creative thinking just to, you know, one, one vendor, but um, definitely helps to know what's possible. Um, you know, I think, I think from there, so kind of like once you've gathered all that information up front uh, to, to really, you know, kind of build your strategy uh, for packaging and, you um, you know, this is design principles. Uh, think about the unboxing experience, um, you know, and, and how you're going to really deliver this, um, you know, experience every time. Um, yeah, I, you know, I kind of start there. And then that, that really goes into like the creative, like start designing your packaging, you know, um, you know, 
concept, you know, do your design process, build that out. Um, do the same, think about graphics, do the same for graphics. Um, and then ladder in, like bring in, you know, all that mandatory information, domicile warnings. And uh, yeah, I think yeah. the last thing is just to format it for the reader and yeah. uh, <laughs> make sure it works. But it sounds like a lot, you know, but um, a lot but, of it's just getting it but, good. But, but, it, but it is, but it is a lot, right? You've yeah. done, there's a ton of work here. And I think that that's, um, you know, there's, there's no reason to, to not say that it is a lot of work. And I think uh, the majority of people out there are not working with as many SKUs and have as much very, you know, variability as uh, coastwide. So, you know, I think for a smaller brand, don't expect to have a 300 plus page document. You know, you right. can knock something out in, you know, 10 pages, right? It's just, yeah. the, the thing is just to get started and to create something that you can build on. And don't wait till you have packaging uh, already, you know, in the marketplace to build this. Like you, when you're developing your product, that's when you should start working on this because that design language is then gonna grow with the brand. Um, and you don't wanna have to try to crowbar things in. Uh, yeah. but I think what would, be, what would be really helpful, Logan, is if I can invite you back and maybe we can just do like a top 10 things that you need to, to build out some some packaging guidelines and make a, a really quick, uh, actionable uh, episode. Yeah, that'd be, I'd be happy to. Yeah. That's awesome. Sounds like fun. Awesome, man. So I, I really want to thank you for one, for creating this thing and having this discussion. Um, I think it's really helpful for people to understand the, the depth that we can get into with packaging um, and how important a document like this is. So when a brand is looking for a document, they're like, well, we've got packaging and it works they don't realize all of the gaps that they have in their system, you know, because a lot of times it's just about moving forward and, and, and making new products. Uh, but something like this actually allows you to do that faster and save time and money. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So Logan, man, thanks again. I appreciate you being on. If anybody wants to reach out to you and um, talk to you yeah. further about this, ask you questions, what's the best place they can reach you at? Yeah, I think, um, you know, reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, more than happy to chat. Uh, yeah, just uh, Logan Steinfeld, LinkedIn. Um, you know, I have a website. You can check that out. It's, it's, I change it all the time, so just don't expect much, but logansteinfeld.com, um, you know, and then, uh, yeah, I think I have my email up there as well, so feel free to shoot me an email if you, if you want to chat about it. Uh, yeah. Awesome, man. And uh, what I'll do is I'll have all your information in the show notes. And we'll, um, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks so much, Avelio. All right, man. Thank you. All right. Take care.